you make that transition from being a hip hop producer to an art? A lot of bashing, tough skin. You know, people was like, dude, you're a producer, man. I want to hear your beats. I just want to hear your beats. I was like, nah, I just reckon it's not. A lot of uh, artists were just picking underground beats for me, like, very underground. And I was like, I got all these beats in here, like commercial beats, like, but none of the artists were picking. So in 2008, I was like, yo, I got to start jumping on my more commercialized beats. So that's what I did. Since people like Wayne, Kanye, he said, was playing around with the auto tune, I said, I want to make my own Harlem version of the auto tune, just to play around, you know what I mean? So and it ended up being a joke that wasn't funny, so I recorded my champagne. I let a couple people hear it. They were like, that's kind of crazy right there. So I'm like, well, and, 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 and previous, I was giving my song, I was recording songs, giving it to DJs. One DJ, good friend of my DJ, was like, Nah, that ain't it. That ain't it. Every week I was like, yo, you got my new record. Like, nah, that ain't it. That ain't it. Then when I recorded Pop Champagne, you heard it. Like, I'm playing this on the radio tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So that, it was just a constant. Like, me and him was thinking, we was almost about to fight. Why you want to play my song? But I had to get out in the wrong rounds, produce some more, and get into the starving artist mode. You know, I put it on my space. I started getting a lot of good feedback. Put it on YouTube, getting a lot of good feedback. I'm doing everything I like. I'm like a starving artist, you know what I mean? Going to the parks, making drops, making specific drops for the DJs and everything. I did everything. Trust me. So how'd you get into the production game initially? Oh, the production game, when I was like, 12, I was signed to an independent company. Then the independent company, the dudes was running, they got seized. And some equipment, they had less this equipment, so I kind of like, after they got locked up, took the equipment, kind of like, started experimenting, making beats. Started doing new beats for local artists. And then, like, in 99, I met Big Al. And he gave me the opportunity to, uh, you know, work with him. And so your we, first record was a Big Al record? Ebonics, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Remember that record? Yeah, yeah, that shit's crazy. Yeah. A couple months later, I went through Nas Travel Agent to, to get him to be me. Yeah. So that was your first smash? That, yeah, that was the first smash. Yeah. So what did he look for you in uh, 2009? 2009, my album's coming out. The name of the album's called Eat the Boy. I got Kerry Hilson on there. I got B. Marie. I got Jim Jones. We got Santana. I got Buster Rhymes on there. I got my big brother Diddy on there. And it's just a party album. It's going to be hot for the summertime. That's what it is, man.